I'm Jacqueline, this is a Pixel 6a, and I wanted to see how this $449 phone holds up on an intense real day in the life. So I'm hitting the streets of New York City to test out the AI, camera, battery, display, and performance of the Google Pixel 6a. If you want to see if we can push this budget phone to its limit, keep watching. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, more on them later. Okay Google, best coffee shops near me. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks so much. I got the cold brew and I was planning to like sit out there for a little while and just drink it and there was like this absolute weirdo just staring at me. So I left immediately. I'm gonna keep exploring. Battery life check-in. I'm at 87% battery life right now. The secret sauce that gives a Pixel 6a its advantage over the $20 cheaper iPhone SE or budget offerings from Motorola or Samsung is really the software experience and artificial intelligence. The Pixel 6a ships with Android 12, and the most noticeable upgrade aesthetically is Android's Material U. I honestly think that people underestimate how useful Google's new voice feature is on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, you can have AI help you to order a new US passport or wait on hold for you on a customer service call. These features right now are only for US English speakers, but I recently talked to Sundar Pichai in another video on this channel, and it really feels like to me he cares a lot about access and bringing all these features to different from parts of the world. So fingers crossed this one expands because it's mind-blowingly useful. All of those voice improvements come from the new Tensor chip in here, which I'm actually not like super stoked about. It's a bit of a mixed bag because the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, which I reviewed earlier this year, were great phones out of the gate. And over the last few months, they've experienced glitches and slowdowns and frame drops and other things that you shouldn't be experiencing on a flagship level phone. And so longevity wise, Tensor raises a little bit of a red flag for me of like, is it gonna be stable over the long run? Google has pushed out a lot of updates for the 6 and 6 Pro that have stabilized them a bit, but it still happens every once in a while. They're not flawlessly fast like they once were. I've even started to experience some graphic slowdowns on this phone already. For example, on Spotify, the animations and stuff feel a little bit delayed, like a little bit sluggish. And that could be that maybe Spotify just isn't an app that's optimized for this phone. It also could be that this phone has a 60 Hertz display, but I think that that is much less of a big deal than people are making it out to be. I am all for fast refresh rate. I love fast refresh rate, but we had 60 Hertz for like a decade, many, many years, and it was great and it worked. And so I don't think that just because we have a faster display now, 60 Hertz suddenly becomes like the dunce cap, terrible, never use it again type of thing. Um, the display from the front looks great. It's bright, it's 1080p, but it still looks pretty sharp from like a normal distance away. But if you, turn the phone at all, like if it's not like the perfect viewing angle, the phone RGBs out very quickly, like much faster than other displays that I've tested on other phones. Speaking of things that are a little bit less than adequate, the device uses a plastic back, but this one actually ended up not being a big deal. I actually didn't even realize it was plastic when I was testing it because of the finish. And then when I found out, I was actually pretty surprised. So that finish is great. I have a few issues with the build. Most of them are not a big deal. I'm gonna list them in order of importance. The first one is that the rails, which are aluminum, according to GSM Arena, actually feel more plasticky than the plastic back. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it doesn't feel like that cool to the touch aluminum that I've experienced in other phones. Second thing, the stereo speakers on here are okay. I use the built-in speakers on my phone all the time for listening to videos, for listening to music as I'm getting ready in the morning. Like I really love having good phone speakers. It's actually a really important feature to me. And these are okay, but I would really like to have a bit more bass there. And the third thing is that I've noticed that the phone gets warm in a lot of different situations. I am so hot right now. It's 96 degrees out and the phone is also getting very warm. So one thing I've noticed with this phone over other phones that I've been testing is that it gets warm much quicker than they do. And I've noticed that even like indoors when it's not super hot out. This is just like a random open public gallery that you can walk through. People are so talented. This is like crazy beautiful in here. This painting is so sick because the perspective changes. Like it almost looks like waves coming through. It's also $5,000. That was the coolest art gallery of all time. Um, I wasn't planning to buy anything, but there was a really cool book in there of old Polaroid shots. Um, and I asked the person, you remember, like, why all these books? and they said that one, so acquired, I bought it. I feel like a lot of you guys probably don't know this, but I'm like very into photography and I've been doing it for years. Dream of mine has always been to get something in a gallery one day. So that's why I'm always so excited to test out these Pixel phones because obviously they have like a really good camera. And so throughout today, I'm gonna to be taking a ton of photos and videos on this phone, and then we'll watch it back at the end of the video um, to see how the performance is. But that was 
so cool. I'm so glad I just did that. The camera is really where this phone like shines through. Obviously you've been seeing a lot of video tests throughout this video. And I think that it's really the perfect encapsulation of Google's software and hardware working together perfectly in perfect harmony because this is still using the same sensor tech as like the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 3. It's still here, but the AI and the software image processing and the tensor chip has made it so the images come out really well and they're processed really fast. They didn't have cold brew, but I got an iced latte. I went to this place last week, which you would know if you saw the camera comparison video. Oh God. All right, it's really hot. This place is unreal. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Wow. It's now 5.20 and the phone's at 72%. I'm really struggling with the filming outside thing with tons of people. I just gotta overcome like the, the social embarrassment of doing it because honestly no one cares, but it feels to me like they do. Last battery life check-in, it is 10.53 and the phone is at 58% battery life. So ending with 58% sounds amazing, but just to give it a little context, I started this day like very late, probably at around 4 p.m. because my phone was just plugged in for most of the day. In a normal day, I would say that I probably drained the battery to around 10% by the end of the day. It's definitely not a two day phone, but it's a really solid one day phone. It is missing wireless charging, which they could have included actually because the back is plastic, but they didn't. Now we're at the point of the video where we get the payoff. We get to look at all the images that I took throughout the day, going around like a maniac, snapping a lot of shots. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. And while we do that, I'm gonna talk about my favorite VPN of all time and the only VPN that I've actually been using for the past year, and that's NordVPN. VPNs allow you to mask your IP address. That's the address that advertisers can use to kind of track your habits around the internet and link it to you. And it also shows them where you're located. And NordVPN also allows you to not only encrypt that data, but then also check for malware and make sure that you're not heading on any malicious sites or downloading bad files. Nord also has automatic kill switch options. So if the VPN connection accidentally drops, it can block the device from accessing the internet. It also has double VPN, which allows you to route your traffic through two servers, doubling the encryption. And it's the fastest VPN on the market. There are even speed tests to prove it. And it's the one that I use every single day. If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, you can go to NordVPN backslash NBT, and that gives you a two year plan plus one additional month free at a huge discount. And it's also risk-free because Nord has a 30 day money back guarantee. Pretty amazing. I honestly would highly recommend that everyone use a VPN and this is the one that I love. And you'd also be supporting a brand that supports me. So link in the description below. Here's a final thought on the Pixel 6a. If you're someone that cares about AI and software experience and camera, this is the budget phone to get. If you care about other things, then you can check out some of my other budget videos right here. But I'm loving this phone and it's an easy recommend for me.